consumption is vital for the monetary system because if consumers didn't exist, there wouldn't be any sellers. Without sellers and consumers manufacturers have no reason to produce anything. In the monetary system people need to consume, from food to services and comfort. If manufacturing was automated, it would create abundance, and along with it remove the need for prices. Without a price tag goods would be of the highest quality. If everything is good quality, sellers wouldn't have a purpose. That would lead to the end of cyclical consumption and the end of monetary system. That's why, in order to maintain cyclical consumption, they have limited automation and produce poor quality goods through planned obsolescence. Many foods, few nutrients, many mobile phones, mostly of poor quality. No wonder that your computer or your phone will become obsolete within months of their market release. Think of how many cars are produced for consumption. Cities are already overcrowded by cars. And think that a two-ton car transports a 70 kilo passenger most of the time. Dangerous to humans and the environment. Or think about how many electronics are thrown away every day as they go out of style. What a waste of materials and human labor. The need for cyclical consumption. The roles of people in a monetary system are basically broken into three distinctions. The employee, the employer, and the consumer. The employee performs tasks for the employer in exchange for a wage or monetary payment. While the employer sells a good or service to the consumer for a profit, another classification of monetary payment. In turn, both the employer and the employee function as consumers, for the monetary payments they obtain are used to purchase goods and services relevant to their survival. This act of purchasing goods and services is what allows the entire system to perpetuate, thus allowing for the employer and employee to make money and thus continue consuming. In other words, it is the requirement of perpetual or cyclical consumption that keeps the entire economy going. If consumption was ever to stop, the whole system would collapse. This produces two severe consequences for society. One, nothing physically produced can ever maintain a lifespan longer than what can be endured in order to maintain the needed cyclical consumption. In other words, everything must break down in a respective amount of time in order to continue the financial circulation needed to power the economy. This characteristic could be defined as planned obsolescence. Planned obsolescence is essentially the deliberate withholding of efficiency, so the product in question breaks down respectively fast. This happens both intentionally, with manufacturers timing their products for breakdown, often as soon as the warranty runs out, and indirectly, where profit-based shortcuts taken in production, usually in the form of cheap materials and poor design, translates into an inferior product immediately, with the failure of the product simply a matter of time. The second consequence is that new products and services must be constantly introduced regardless of functional utility, generating endless waste. The result of these two issues are nothing but unacceptable. For not only are resources being neglectfully used in products that are designed not to last, wasting human energy and materials, the amount of frivolous waste and pollution that results is staggering. In other words, waste is a deliberate byproduct of industry's need to keep cyclical consumption going. The obsolete or expired product is trashed, often to landfills, polluting the environment, while the constant multiplicity accelerates this pollution. To express this from a different angle, imagine the economic ramifications of production methods that strategically maximize the efficiency and sustainability of every product, using the best known materials and techniques available at the time. Imagine products so well designed that they didn't need maintenance for, say, a hundred years. Imagine a house that was built from fireproof materials where all appliances, electrical operations, plumbing and the like were made from the most impermeable, highest integrity resources available on earth. In such a saner world, where we actually created things to last, minimizing pollution and waste, a monetary system would be impossible. For cyclical consumption would slow tremendously, forever weakening so-called economic growth. All manufacturers have contempt for you to sell you the toothpaste, the products that they sell you are deliberately, deliberately designed to wear out, break down, so you have to continually service those things. You notice that your telephone is pretty reliable? Yeah, the instrument, yes. the phone, 
That stays forever. You bet. If the automobile companies had to maintain their cars, it would be a phone. Oh, yeah, the phone unit. company has to maintain the phone. That's why it's good. That's why your units hold up. I never thought of that. I don't. Most so a phone never, I mean, you know, operators can be bad. Yeah. Please can be bad, but the phone itself. Well, it's the same for your TV sets. You mean if, if RCA, if everybody had to maintain their own... You bet. They'd all be... They'd all be automatic system which you pull out, shove in a replacement unit. If your engine breaks down, they pull out the engine, shove in a courtesy engine, and you take off. Why hold up the whole car when you need a battery job? If you did that in the Army Air Force, you couldn't <laughs> operate at all. Your society is really comprised of very stupid men. You live in an insane culture where we duplicate things. It's like having a television station in every home or every apartment building. Textile technology, programmable materials, nanotechnology, biotechnology, those technologies, along with automation, can create sustainability and would also replace labor. The monetary system creates these situations in order to progress, and to get rid of these situations we have to get rid of the monetary system. Well, the decision-making system now is mainly based upon different industries which feel that they have a good product so they advertise and convince people to buy that product. Whereas in the future, in a saner system, we would design products not to wear out and break down, to last as long as possible, so that the responsibility of, of the service sector would not be overloaded. The longer materials last, the less burdensome to society. Therefore, our major concern is not profit, it's the well-being of human beings throughout the world. To the degree that we neglect people, we hurt our own future. Uh, in essence, to me, all of the marvels of science and technology, all of the electronics and mechanical wonders, are just so many millions of tons of junk, unless it enhances the lives of men. It's sad knowing that human beings are able to understand their existence, but are merely consumers in our system. As for the bad quality of products, Food is threatening people's lives, and our well-being is the most important thing for us, and for the evolution of humankind. It's about time we realize this. Technology should be an extension of our lives, the best possible tools, otherwise what's its purpose? Knowing what technology is capable of, such a situation is inexcusable.